A lot of people think of Medicare as the gold standard of United States health coverage, and any attempt to cut it incurs the wrath of older Americans, a politically powerful group. But there are substantial coverage gaps in traditional Medicare. One of them is care for your teeth. We already covered Medicaid and dental care. Let's do Medicare. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Special thanks to Austin Frack, from whose Upshot column this episode was adapted. Almost one in five adults old enough to qualify for Medicare, 65 years old and older, have untreated cavities. Another 20% have lost all their teeth. Half of Medicare's beneficiaries have some periodontal disease or infection of structures around teeth, including the gums. Bacteria from such infections can circulate elsewhere in the body more easily than you might think, contributing to other health problems like heart disease and strokes. But traditional Medicare does not cover routine dental care like checkups, cleanings, fillings, dentures, and tooth extractions. Paying for dental care out of pocket is hard for many Medicare beneficiaries. Half have annual incomes below $23,000 per year. Those who have the means but are looking for a deal might travel abroad for cheaper dental care. Tens of thousands of Americans go to Mexico each year for dental work at lower prices. Many others travel the globe for care. Although low-income Medicare beneficiaries can also qualify for Medicaid, that's of little help for those living in states with gaps in Medicaid dental coverage, as we've discussed previously. According to a study published in Health Affairs in a given year, three quarters of low-income Medicare beneficiaries do not receive any dental care at all. Among higher income beneficiaries, the figure is about one quarter. Amber Willink, the lead author of the study and a researcher at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health said, and I'm quoting, the separation of coverage for dental care from the rest of our health care has had dramatic effects on both. As a consequence of avoidable dental problems, the Medicare program bears the cost of expensive emergency department visits and avoidable hospitalizations. It's lose-lose. Traditional Medicare will cover dental procedures that are integral to other covered services. Services. So if your Medicare-covered hospital procedure involves dental structures in some way, important related dental care would be covered, but paying for any other care is up to the patient. Lack of dental coverage is among the top concerns of Medicare beneficiaries. The program also lacks coverage for hearing, vision, or long-term care services. However, many Medicare Advantage plans, the private alternatives to the traditional program, cover these services. For example, 58% of Medicare Advantage enrollees have coverage for dental exams. In receiving these benefits through private plans, enrollees are also subject to plans' efforts to limit use by, for example, requiring prior authorization or offering narrow networks of providers. These restrictions can be problematic for some beneficiaries, and about two-thirds of Medicare beneficiaries opt for the traditional program, not a private plan. Adding a dental benefit to Medicare is popular. A Families USA survey of likely voters found that the vast majority, or 86%, of likely voters support doing so. The survey also found that when people do not see a dentist, the top reason is cost. Ms. Willing's study estimated that a Medicare dental benefit that covered three quarters of the cost of care would increase Medicare premiums by $7 a month, or about 5%. The rest would need to be financed by taxes. The cost of such a benefit might be offset or partly offset by reductions in other healthcare spending, reflecting the fact that poor oral health contributes to other health problems. Making a case for this in the political arena would not be easy, though. The initial cost would be an inviting target for politicians who express concern about fiscal prudence, regardless of any potential long-term gain. But expanding Medicare has been done before. In 2006, a prescription drug benefit was added to the program. The law for that program was enacted in 2003, and in that same year, the Surgeon General released a report calling for dental care to be treated and covered like other health care. Whether by Medicare or Medicaid, that wish is still unfulfilled. Hey, did you enjoy this video? It really does help if you like or subscribe to the show right down there. And while we've got you, anything you can do to help support the show in other ways is appreciated as well. And one way to do that is Patreon.com, a subscription service which allows you, the user, to support the show for as like a little dollar a month. And if you don't want to, that's fine. It will always be free. But if you can, it helps make the show bigger and better. We'd really like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Carlos Iergos, and Crafty Geek, and as always, especially, our Surgeon Admiral Sam. Go to Patreon patreon.com slash healthcare triage. Link's also down below. And while we've got you, get any merch you like at httmerch.com and my book, The Bad Food Bible, still out there, still available in stores. Really appreciate it if you pick up a copy. 